Hello and welcome once more to a Red Gaming Tech video of myself, Marta, where as always I am here with the latest from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. For those of you wondering why you're getting two videos today, well, there was a little bit of an oopsie. That Threadripper video was supposed to go up yesterday, but basically a Windows update decided that it wanted to cancel my upload while I was asleep, so that was fun. Anywho. We've got quite a bit to get through today, so let's start off with NVIDIA's financial report and a few statements from Jensen Huang. So, if you needed any more proof that financial years are weird, like I always say, these results are for the first quarter of the fiscal year 2020, even though it's still only May of 2019. So, this quarter ends April 28th, 2019, and... The NVIDIA reported revenue of 2.22 billion compared to 3.21 billion last year and 2.21 billion the previous quarter. So essentially we have seen a significant decrease versus last year but it's pretty much flat with the previous quarter. Although 2.2 billion is still a lot of money, I wouldn't exactly say no if someone turned up on my front door with that and gave it to me and no strings attached. But to lose a billion year over year is not exactly good, but we've got more to discuss, of course. Now, the most important thing is, of course, the gaming sector. Well, not the most important, but the most pertinent, I suppose you could say, to us watching this video or me recording this video, is that the gaming revenue dropped 39%. So, overall, the revenue is down 31% compared to last year. But the biggest sector for NVIDIA, which is still gaming, despite their push with deep learning and all that sort of stuff, dropped that 39% that I just mentioned. Now, for those of you wondering, okay, what was actually the cause of this? Well, this is the first statement I want to discuss from Jensen Huang, who discussed the due drop in gaming revenue and basically said that it's not to do with touring. And he said, quote, the entire reason for Q4 and Q1 is attributed to oversupply in the channel as a result of cryptocurrency and has nothing to do with touring. In fact, touring is off to a faster start than Pascal was, and it continues to be at a faster pace than Pascal was. And so the pause in gaming is now behind us. We're on a growth trajectory with gaming. But for those of you who were paying attention to the Q4 earnings might be going, hang on, didn't he say something a little bit different then? And the answer is yes. Yes, he did, where he said, quote, sales of certain high-end GPUs using NVIDIA's new Turing architecture, excuse me, were lower than expected. Now, I myself have reported that in terms of the first few weeks, Turing is beating Pascal, but it seems that NVIDIA were expecting it to do even better versus Pascal than it actually has. That's pure speculation, of course, but it does make sense when you look at what Jensen is saying and the actual figures. Now, interestingly enough, they are also laying the blame for some of this decline at the Intel CPU supply issues. And you might go, OK, how does that figure? They're you know, competing, basically. And basically, it's affecting the growth of Turing gaming laptops post-launch, which I guess makes sense. You know, notebooks and laptops and all that are a big deal for both AMD and NVIDIA. And you could argue that for NVIDIA, of course, they're... GPUs are going to be in laptops with Intel CPUs inside of them. It does make sense that the supply issues are affecting them in that particular segment. And there was no mention, even indirectly, of what Navi is going to do to NVIDIA's bottom line in the future. Of course, we've had a lot of rumours and speculation about the performance of Navi. We've heard rumours about 2080 level performance and the more likely 2070 level performance. But we obviously don't know. But what is interesting is that they did talk about the 12nm versus 7nm issue. Because, of course, when Navi does come out, it is, of course, going to be on the 7nm architecture. And despite the fact that AMD are going to be ahead of them in terms of that, NVIDIA don't see any need to rush to the next node in the chain, as it were. And Jensen said, quote, if you take our Turing and you compare it against a 7nm GPU on energy efficiency, it's incomparable. In fact, the world's first 7nm GPU already exists, and it's easy to go and pull that and compare the performance and energy efficiency against one of our current GPUs. The real focus for our engineering team is to engineer a process that makes sense for us and to create an architecture that is energy efficient. So unless AMD can really surprise them with something going on with Navi, they're in no tearing hurry to move on from 
12nm just yet. Of course, you may recall that we had those rumours about a touring refresh not too long ago, but as Paul himself discussed, we're most likely seeing a faster spin on GDDR6 memory, and maybe an increase in CUDA core counts, but we are unlikely to see a die shrink there for touring, because NVIDIA, from Jensen's own comments, don't seem to see the need at present. But speaking of AMD, we actually have some rather interesting news now as their plans for August come to light. So what we have here is a release of the program for Hot Chips in August, which is a conference where you also get your you tend to get, should I say, sorry, a lot of architecture deep dives. And thanks to that program, which you will find linked in the description below this video if you wish to give it a read, you will see that we are going to be seeing both Zen 2 and Navi architectures detailed at Hot Chips in August this year. So this doesn't really mean a whole lot in terms of well, it being unusual or anything like that, they did this previously with Ryzen after it came out. You know, they did a deep dive into the architecture, explaining the integrity of it all. But it does seem fairly likely to me that they would have released both products by the time Hot Chips rolls around. Now, of course, that is just a guess, but it seems fairly likely it would be a bit odd to do such a deep dive if they're not out yet, but of course it's possible. I do have a direct quote here from the program which reads, quote, from medicine to the frontiers of scientific research, manufacturing and entertainment, the demand for computing and graphics technologies continues growing. While we are entering a golden age of high performance computing, it is increasingly clear that the techniques the industry has used to reach this point will not deliver similar advances over the coming years. As the gains from Moore's law have slowed in the recent years, Years, the industry has begun to focus on new areas of innovation to maintain the historical pace of performance improvements. AMD CEO Lisa Su will discuss new techniques in system architecture, silicon design and software that will enable future generations of computing and graphics products to deliver more performance with greater efficiency. So basically, long story short, we're going to get lots of lovely details about both Zen 2 and Navi. Can't wait. So, hope you guys have enjoyed the RGT double feature today. Don't get used to it. <laughs> but in all seriousness, thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. And thank you again for watching. Uh, your support really does mean a great deal to us both. Bye-bye.